Uh, we also had uh, a few times where, where I sort of talked about faith and math. Uh, as part of my job at SDU is integration of faith with discipline. And a lot of people will say, think math, well, how are you going to do that with math? And it really, I think, fits very well. I'm going to share three ways that I do that with math. Uh, the first ties in very much with math contests, the idea of mistakes. We talked a lot about, well, how do we minimize our mistakes on a math contest? Because on a math contest, there are two main kinds of mistakes. You just don't know how to do the problem. Unfortunately, in the contest, there's not much you can do about that. Uh, maybe later go and review that topic. But if you don't know how to do it, there's not much you can do about that particular problem. But you can make an unintentional mistake while doing the problem. And that was one I got parked over and over and over again. The more you think you know how to do the problem, the more careful to make sure you actually did everything right. Don't make a silly mistake in that. And in the line activity, same type of thing. A few people got off the line because they, they got things mixed up and were totally off, or they just didn't at first understand what they were doing, or they make an unintentional mistake. But in life, I think there's a third mistake that, that is made, and that's willful disobedience. On a math contest, no one would ever think, oh, the question says 2 plus 2, I'm going to say 5 this time, because I just don't want to give the right answer. That, that's sort of a laughable mistake to make, and yet in life, that, that's the mistake we most often do make. Yes, mom and dad said go clean my room, but that's not what I'm going to do. Or yeah, the counselor said lights out at 10.30, but that's not what I'm going to do. Now, we know what we're supposed to do, but we just choose willfully that we're going to do something else. Which in math is, we would never do on a math contest. But in life we tend to do that quite a bit. And I, that's a hard problem to solve. In math contests there's no easy button. Hard problem to solve. Most problems in life are that way too. That they're, they're difficult problems, not hardest, I mean, not easy to solve at all. But that doesn't mean the, the work to, to try to solve them is valuable and the effort and what we can learn in trying to solve them. But that willful disobedience problem, I think no matter how hard we try to solve it, we're still going to struggle with that. I think, I think God knew that and that's why He sent Jesus, it is knowing we were going to struggle with that sin problem and we were not going to be able to solve it on our own. No matter how hard we work with that. Another way I see relation is just the idea of beauty. Uh, I find math beautiful. Uh, I won't sing this song, but uh, the, the fractals we did, the fractal cuts, the origami, just a few fairly simple things, and you put them together, and all of a sudden, wow, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, the sky, refraction of light, and we get so many different beautiful views. And even just the fact of, why do we appreciate beauty at all? I believe we appreciate beauty because God appreciates beauty and he gave us that gift to, to appreciate beauty as well as when he made us in his image for that. And then just the idea of big numbers. Uh, we talked a little bit about visualizing big numbers. We in fact did watch this. What would, uh, what was it, 300 billion look like? That's a big number. And we saw a lot of sand in terms of visualizing that. But in math, we can talk about really big numbers. In fact, this morning I heard a discussion, what was it, Graham's number? Yeah. What, what, what was it about Graham's number? It's sort of the biggest number somebody's described or something? The biggest number that actually is a question, and that's all the Okay. I, I won't try to explain Graham's number, but mathematicians, we can talk about big numbers, we can push the limit as to well, what would be a bigger number, and uh, those kind of things. Do we really, in one sense we understand those numbers, in another sense we don't. And you know, what about infinity? Well, we sort of understand that idea, idea, but we sort of don't. I think the Bible has a lot to say about the infinity of heaven and, and eternity and, and God's infinite love for us. And uh, you know, my, my study of math and, and sort of understanding infinity, even if I don't understand infinity, helps me as well here as I think about eternity and those kind of things. So, 